So I just want to find out, is an executive producer eligible to claim rights to an artist's song or albums after the contract is terminated? It depends on the contract. You know, if the contract stated that the executive producer can do that, yes. You know, and if the, the artist um, appended their signature to it and also agreed to that fact, yes. You know, there's no retain rule. Is it quite common for executive producers to have such contracts with artists? Because based on the current one with uh, Frame Prince and Diana, some a lot of people are saying that uh, uh, it's not possible. It seems so harsh because if we part ways or we terminate a contract and then you are claiming rights, meaning that I cannot even sing those songs or own it again. Okay, so, I mean, what I know with industry is that um, if you do... Cursory search, a cursory search on some of these things. You realize that just, I'll say, a little under 10 years ago, if I'm approximate to be five years ago, that somebody, somebody like Jay Z, yeah, mm -hmm. got hold of his masters. And when I say masters, masters is your original songs that you can now um, sell on your own or put it back on streaming platforms to make your own money. Because the idea here is that once an executive producer invests in your work, they own the, um, what you call it, there's a, um, I can't find the word, yeah, there's, a, there's a term. Um, they, they own, um, they actually own the master, but I'm trying to find the term. Mm. What, 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 what you own, what you own as, 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 uh, as, as an artist is intellectual property. You know, because you wrote the songs and all that. But the oh, why, 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 why am I forgetting? I'm sure it will pop up. <laughs> what? I'm sure the word will pop up. Yeah, yeah, it's a very common thing. In those times when we used to do hard copies, Mexico, it's called mechanical rights. Mechanical right. Yeah, mechanical rights. You should read on it. Yes, mechanical right, rights are, are units that are sold. I think like the. Um, the, the, the physical album that is sold, like the CDs and all that stuff. There's an executive producer who owns that, 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 um, that, that, that right. You know, because they determine how many CDs or how many copies or whatever. But now we are in a digital space, so you, you can't really quantify. It's just like in the air, maybe in the air, everybody's streaming. Now, so the, obviously, the, it will translate into uh, the, the stream, whatever. Now, in the streaming, all is contract again. The, the company or the label own the streaming, um, uh, the streams. Mm -hmm. You know, they make money off the streams, then they give a percentage of that stream to the artist. You understand? Now, where they have a contract that says, that binds the two of them, that says, that, listen, I own your streams for the next 15 years. If you break your contract in five years, they still own the work they did with you because they pay for production. Until the, uh, the year's agreed ends. I didn't hear that. So you said, like, for instance, if it's 16 years, meaning if you terminate the contract, they will still have the right to it until the full year is completed. Yes. You should also do a small research on what Black Sheriff have, have signed with uh, Empire Records. They, 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 they have a stuff for the next 15 years. So if he breaks the the, the record, that, I mean the, the contract in the next five years, all the songs that he recorded with him, they will still own it for the next fifteen years. Then, when they, they when they get to the fifteenth year, he now can now go and renegotiate with them or buy out the the, the masters or the rights. And that's what it is it's happening with everybody around the world. Okay. So it's a common thing. Yes, the, the executive producer can do that. Now they can also bar you from performing those songs, but it's a disadvantage if if they bar you from performing those songs. It doesn't translate into sales anymore for you. And sales here yes, now is streamed. Usually, or before, it used to be uh, hard copies. You know whether they are tapes or they are CDs to be bought. Because if the artist keeps performing the songs. People will go out there and stream or actually purchase whatever hard copies that are made. 
So it's a disadvantage for the the, the um, record label owner to say don't perform. But some people don't mind. They are like stop performing the songs. All right. You know because if the artist is not vibrant or they are not everywhere, people will not know they have works out there for them to even go and find it and purchase it. Okay. Boo, you know you've really explained it into details, the technical bit, but people on social media, Ghanaians responding to it like, it's too harsh for you to claim it. But then, of course, you're saying that it's something which is accepted worldwide. Mm. Mm. Uh, yes, I mean, the people on, on, on social media are not business people. They are not business. They are not into the music business. So they can have their say. You know, it's just like, um, maybe I don't know nothing about military or nursing or surgeries, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I, I mean, there's a story that broke that a woman said, oh, she went to do surgery and a scissors was left in her, in, in her stomach. And I'm like, why would anybody want to do that? But hey, it could happen, right? Because on the table, if somebody cuts somebody open, they might even leave a bucket, a small bucket in your stomach. <laughs> if it happens, yes, they are able to happen. And because I'm not a professional in that realm, when I hear stuff like that, I only jump to the victim's defense or insult the doctors or, you know what I'm saying? So it's understandable what the people on social media are saying. They, they don't know the ins and outs of All right. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Babu, here in Ghana, we've seen some uh, managers. This one is now a producer who is in the news for it take over the digital platforms and sometimes social media accounts of artists. A lot of people have been asking, why would you take over? Are you, you're not going to, you can't post their new stuff, the things that they are doing. So when you hear managers or people, maybe once it's bad blood or they terminate the contract, they take over the digital platforms and the social media handles. How do you feel? Do you think maybe such situation could be handled amicably? Okay, first and foremost, no manager can do that to an artist. So anybody who does that to an artist is more than a manager. They might be an executive producer. Now, what, what, and how did they come to even get hold of the page? You know, once you start working with an artist, the artist becomes a brand. Mm-hmm. So you need to now protect or check what they post on social media. So you find a social media manager for them. You know who manages their page and all that stuff. You understand? You grow the page. The idea here is to grow the page using the business and you understand to push your your your, your works, do everything about the art, stories, everything. You understand? So now if you build that fan base, let's say the person started with a a meager number of maybe two thousand followers or even a five hundred followers. And mm-hmm. now you build the page to a million uh, followers, you know, and have that humongous followership. Yes, you own the page. So it's understandable that you want to take hold of it. Now, um, oh, there's, there's nothing in this world that talk cannot solve. The world was created by talking. No, not action. Talking. Let there be light and there was light. So if I have issues with somebody, you sit down and solve it and make a beat, uh, you guys feel that you cannot... Um, I agree. I'll give you a classic example. There's this young lady that uh, was working with one coffee man or something. Um, she's a songstress. Oh, uh, Is it a Sean thing you told? It's Sean. No, yeah. it's Sean. So they had an issue like that. That was a challenge. So, I mean, if, 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 if another label wants to come for you, then they should pay for the work that uh, coffee men have done. If not, you say, okay, um, maybe we don't have the money to pay, but let's use a page. As and when we show us money, you know, we give you some. There, there's always a way around. Mm-hmm. It, it only becomes difficult if the dialogue doesn't go in one party or another party. So that, you know, but I mean, there's always a possibility to to, to rise. You know. Mm. So, Boo, do, would you say that artists' talent should pay more attention to the contract that they sign? It's, it's very important, you know, because it is it is your it is it is what makes you and what kills you. You understand? And I also believe that you know the most of the mistakes that all of us make is usually I might go and go and 
download a contract that is um, maybe a universal record contract, and I'm asking my artist, I have a new artist called Vanilla. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if you know him. <laughs> I, I know him. You know him, you should be doing stories on him then. Yeah, and we... We we interview him uh VGMAs. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I'm putting I'm putting him in your hands. You should be uh, <laughs> I mean if, um you know when he coughs you say Vanny Lap off. We will do that. Like, we can do that. Uh, because you have a you have a big platform. Mm -hmm. So 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 I, I, I go and pick um, a contract that I shall sign with um, Universal Records and then I'll come in in front of Vanilla to sign. I mean, she doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I need to start uh, my own contract based on what um, I want to do and what I believe Vanilla can do, you know. And for me, a, a contract is, 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 is a continuous thing, you know, because at the time, maybe I signed Vanilla, maybe he had only one trouser, one trouser. Mm -hmm. Then now... I've gotten him ten trousers. I mean, ten trousers. You know, so um, at that point, something has, has changed. So by the time we reach the ten trousers, we should be able to say that it's okay, Charlie. Now you have, you know, this amount of clothing. Where do we go from here? Oh, at the time I signed um, Vanilla, he was driving a, a Range Rover. It means that by the next level, we should be flying uh, private jets. You know, and I'm using all this as, as as a basis that the contract should be reviewed as we go. Because mm -hmm. is that if I'm signing um, Vanilla for what? Um, well, well, uh, if I say Vanilla should sign a contract of 20 years, yeah, I'm sure if Vanilla, Vanilla is 20 something now, and I say sign a contract for 20 years, they will look at that thing and look scared. In 20 years, so I'm going to be 40 something when I'm done. How am I even going to be able to be sure that within the next 20 years, all the things I say I'm going to do, I will be able to hold it by myself. How can I be held accountable for mm -hmm. it? You understand what I'm saying? Now, so realistically, we need to look in the space or the confines in which we operate as, as individuals and then what? Draw a contract. Now, our problem with uh, as a nation in Ghana, and I, uh, let me just try and uh, open up the conversations. Mm -hmm. It's just like we're, we're going to take people's laws, and we are using them as a constitution. Their yeah, systems are systems are different. So if 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 if, if a, a, a Warner Music or EMI, whatever, you know, Empire, they have system and structures. So when they say we've signed you for fifteen years, they know what they are talking about. You know, mm -hmm. we don't have that system here. So we need to work with a system that suits us. And that's, that's been our problem all the time. Somebody going to take a template uh, from, from, from Ghana web, you know, or somewhere on the web, and they want to now change when they, there's um, Asha there to Vanilla. And now they say Vanilla should sign. So more I diligence mean, should be done to contract before signing. Great. Mabu, I really want to have, based on that conversation that we're having, how best can managers and artists part with? I know with your case with Shata, it was one that was good. But then usually when you are leaving the campus, the whole lot, this whole drama back and forth, we've seen a couple of that in the industry. How best do you think we can handle such a situation? Wow, this question is um, like asking me, do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> wow. I, I want you to you you've experienced that before. and then yeah, but, but, but the question you're asking me is like, you're telling me how you should leave your boyfriend. You know, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I think the best thing I can say is it's time for you to leave your boyfriend. You should do it amicably. amicably. But the things that will lead to leaving your boyfriend, eh, I will not know. Maybe you got him doing a three song or a quadruple song or whatever you want to call it. Or he beats you up mercilessly. You know, so at that point when you are leaving, it will be it will be violent, right? Mm -hmm. It will be with her. Yeah. So we can only sit here, you know, maybe you are seated in the confines of your office, some air condition is blowing your hair and you are taking notes, so you think it's nice. But when you are in the in the matter, nobody will tell you how to leave or not to leave. But ideally, ideally. You know, it should be amicable, you know? 
Okay. Okay. Finally, before we wrap up this one, um, the effects that such termination comes uh, have on the career of the artist. Looking at Dinah, for instance, or anybody who suffers that, where you do not have the right to perform your songs and all that, even on your album, we're looking at the uh, the the effects that it have. Do you say it's so dark, like we cannot do anything about it, or maybe there are ways where you can follow and then maybe get hold of the works that you've lost? I mean, so so again, it comes back to dialogue. If you are not able to um, dialogue and 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 then come to reasoning or a reasonable or reasonable terms with you know, the executive producer there's there's you can always go to court and seek redress you know but when you get to the court that means your paperwork will now um, um, um come into play what did you guys agree on before you started the job you know the good thing with with courts are that i can uh, there's something called um Oh, why am I losing all my vocabulary this morning? <laughs> duress, duress, that's pressure. Like you get somebody to do something under pressure. You understand? Mm. Now, when you go to the court, you know the courts are open for everybody. If you have a good lawyer, the lawyer can argue and say, listen, yes, we signed that. You can have our what, 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 what. But we signed all that under duress. And that duress is the fact that, okay, Blue House Entertainment is a huge uh, brand. We've done plenty of things. So Vanilla makes us and is in awe of all the things that we've done. It, I mean, this is the bulldog that did the Shatawali. Oh, this is the bulldog that did um, um, watching college. Five, five, all that stuff. So when we say, hey, your contract is for life, they will sign. Because they were in awe at the time. Mm -hmm. You understand? But yeah. now they've done this for five years, six years, and they are feeling some way. You know, if your lawyer is very good, yeah, they can argue their way out. But I think most importantly, you try um, your dialogue. If it hasn't worked, go to court. You might just find justice in the court. All right. Thank you very much, Bulgoy, for your time this afternoon. Okay, thank you too. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm.